Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited to showcase a 3D to AI workflow that is done completely in Blender with the help of this add-on called Palladium. So without any further delay, let me get straight into it. Here I'm showing you how to install Palladium. Basically once you click the install dependencies button and Palladium is basically just like any other add-on in Blender. I'm just going to leave the GitHub download link in my description. When you press the install dependencies button you're going to be met with this terminal that don't worry is going to take around 20 to 15 minutes depending on how good your pc is and how quick your pc is to install some dependencies which are going to be the models that we're going to use later on in this video and i'm going to explain what that all means just in a bit now i'm very excited for this workflow because it's going to be a great opportunity for people who want to dip their toes in uh, AI generations like videos and even text and images uh, but are not sure on how to use stable diffusions automatic 11.11 or comfy UI so for those of you who are mainly 3d uh, artists or 3d developers uh, this is this video is gonna be for you alright so I'm going to open a new project now in your new scene select video editor and select sequence and preview here press the n key so you can get the generative ai add-on that we just installed make sure you don't have any input we don't have any strips yet but i'm going to show you how to get strips and use them uh, as input in this add-on but first let me tell you what a lora is it's basically a low rank adaptation file a fine-tuned model that helps you with the final generation if you want to train a character or a style etc here you're going to put the two inputs, uh, imported inputs, which is the positive input and the underneath it is going to be the negative input. Here I'm just going to select whatever style that I want. I want a futuristic style and I'm going to make a futuristic cyberpunk room. This is going to be my positive input and I don't want it to be grainy, overexposed or ugly. This is going to be my negative input and I'm pretty sure you know what negative and positive inputs mean. It's what I want to see and what I don't want to see. I'm going to give my uh, input some power and I want it to be refine. I'm not going to use LCM. Basically, LCM is like a lower that speeds up uh, your workflow. So if I have it on six quality steps and I press on LCM, I can have my generation very quickly. Anyway, I'm going to burn through that so I can show you my result which is decent so I highly recommend that you start from here with image generation if you're into blender and you've never tried image generation before if that's the case where have you been these past year okay so in the seed by the way is the random number that inputs the same uh, output each time anyway so I'm going to try some video generations now I'm going to try maybe animate the fusion let me see what happens hopefully it doesn't take too long because it's running locally but this is supposed to work at 4 GBs of RAM I believe or 6 GBs of RAM this is what I've read and uh, the github page so I'm gonna try and see if I can generate an animated fusion from strip without it taking forever and afterwards I'm gonna try something else and experiment with it Well, Animated Fusion took way too long, so I'm going to show you what I got using an image-to-image -image, uh, result. Basically, I'm taking strips and using or strips or just um, renders in my render view, which are the strips that I'm talking about, and I'm using those in order to render out a result and stable diffusion. So... This was basically a bird that I modeled and I used it as a strip just as an experimentation but now I'm gonna show you how to make a really simple shape I'm gonna make a spaceship right here this is going to be my cockpit and I'm going to carefully model a fantastic looking futuristic spaceship a cyber spaceship without details 
And I think we're set. This could be my input. Alright, so what I'm basically gonna do here, for those of you who already use Stable Diffusion and are a 3D artist, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use Control Net within this add-on so I can render this cube spaceship thing into a fine looking spaceship. Make sure the output is set to Control Net so you don't have it uh, give you an image to image result control net 512 by 512 and you can link the scene as I'm going to show you later on so you can modify your results and your generation at the same time which is going to be very cool and let's see how stable diffusion interprets my result here But first, let me show you how to add a rendered strip. Basically, a strip could be an image or an image sequence. The strip is the yellow strip underneath, and the rendered strip is the one above it. I have an add-on that helps me add rendered strips whenever I want, whenever I select a strip that I have, so it could be rendered in the proper way. And I'm going to link that add-on underneath. Make sure you always use the rendered strip as the input. Okay? And just like before, use LCM to speed up things. Uh, pick a random seed. If you like a seed from your previous generations, you can pick that as well. Pick a style. I want to pick something futuristic. And the strip's power is how much do you want the strip to affect the final output. I'm going to leave it at 0 0.52. And this is what you can expect. This is not the image to image result. This is the control net result. I've been, I used the control net model. I think basically it used the depth information, not very sure. I know that there's canny, uh, there's a canny model here, and there is an illusion model as well, but I'm pretty sure this is the depth information. Otherwise it would have had more sharper edges, but I'm satisfied with the result, with the image to image. I'm pretty sure you're gonna find this interesting. So it's basically like a render engine that you give the styles to. You should really experiment with this if you're like a beginner with AI, but you've been using 3D for a very long time. Now let us make something different. Here I'm going to experiment with a video to video. So what I have in mind is I'm going to build my prompt just like I did with the previous examples, but I'm going to use a image strip that I rendered from in a Mixamo animation. Here I'm going to Input my image sequence. There. Just give me a minute. Yes. I'm going to pick this. A basic walk cycle. She's walking towards the camera. And what I'm going to show you is basically a concept of what you could do. I highly recommend that you can that you experiment with it. And this is I doubt this is going to be as good as anime diffusion or stable diffusion video, but it's good for beginners who've never tried this to you know, try their luck with it and understand how it works through Blender. All right. So what I want to do is turn this into a stylized animation. At least I'm going to attempt to do that. Hopefully it works. Let's go back to my video sequencer. And if you're a Blender user, I don't think I need to show you how to use Mixamo. You've used it a thousand times before. Now here's the strip. This is what I'm talking about. Um, you select this strip and you press the add button. Here, you have the add button. But wait, let me fix the time because it's jittering. Apparently, I've imported uh, different timed pictures and it's not adjusting my animation according to the picture's names. What I can do here just to quickly fix that without having to import these image sequences again is just I'm going to mess with the strobe and the speed. I mean, I'm just experimenting with this. I'm not going. It's not going to be production purposes. All right. Press the add button, then render strips, and this is what we're going to use as our input in the generative AI. All right. Input strips. And I'm going to use 
the image to image tab because I want to take each image and give it the same seed and generate my prompt a girl walking in a busy cyberpunk street let's see how long this takes see you after a few coffees and after a lot of coffee this is the result that I'm met with I mean the idea is still there not as good as Sybil Diffusion video or Anime Diffusion as I've said it's not even as good as using the old workflow of EB synth and image to image generation but that's because perhaps I did not uh, put a random seed of my choosing and because I didn't have the ability to use control net and image to image generation at the same time but let me show you the most interesting thing and what you're probably here to see here I'm going to link a copy of my scene so I can use it directly in my video sequencer here now I'm going to switch to my video sequencer sequencer and preview now I'm going to input the scene that I've just linked as my strip that I'm going to use and here's the cool thing whenever I update this rig here this control net rig it's going to update on my video sequencer and it's going to give me a result based on how this control net rig is posed so let me make give him a jump an awkward jump a quick awkward jump and I've noticed if you want to use this uh, add-on properly you're gonna have to put him in the side view not the front view if you've got him in the front view the arrow is not going to distinguish between the back and the front and press ctrl r by the way so you can update your strip before generating choose the input as strip and choose the model as open pose control net where is it open pose open pose open pose rig image click it as open pose rig image read as now the same setting as before the positive prompt what you want to see and the negative prompt what you don't want to see give it a style I'm gonna give it a 50s comic style and I'm going to prompt a superhero jump in between buildings awkwardly very well I like how many styles you can choose from and the styles basically give you more fine tuning of your prompt gives you better prompts for your positive and negative prompts uh, some negative prompts you can always use bad face bad anatomy ugly cross-eyed uh, duplicate uh, body parts again LCM so it doesn't take too long now generate these strips and this in my opinion is the most impressive feature like I know we had an add-on to produce open pose images in blender then we can use it back in stable diffusion but this is very ergonomic i can just use the stable diffusion interface to make any pose that i want maybe perhaps try animation in the future i mean that's the point of it all isn't it well anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope this changed your mind about ai maybe you can start using it a bit with your workflow now that you understand that it's just basically a tool and not a replacement thank you for watching make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one